Park Reviews. Since starting this little uh, adventure, there's been lots of people that have almost asked me, why did you start this? Why sculpture parks? Why these sculpture parks? Well, as you can see, this is where I ride my bike. One of the parks I ride through is this one, Lincoln Woods Centennial Park. The other one's immediately adjacent to it, Skokie North Shore Channel Park. One feeds right into the other. Pretty handy, really. And you get the pleasure of riding right along McCormick Boulevard the entire way. I go past these sculptures all the time, and I start to think dumb thoughts about them. And then, of course, who do I share these dumb thoughts with? The answer is YouTube. Today's another special edition of Sculpture Park Reviews. I'm calling it Invitations. Some sculptures invite you to interact with them by sitting down or going through or something else. And I thought today I'm going to see what happens when you try to do that. So, you saw my reaction to the Gallucci benches in episode one. But you didn't really see what I saw when I sat down. And that's what this is. You see this. It's kind of nice. And I suppose you can talk to your friend about it, even if you're not sitting next to one another. This is Jim Gallucci's Gate of Hope. Ow! Ow! It's hot. I don't know why I expected to be in Narnia. I just did. Ted Garner, Baie de Alacran. Well, it's comfortable enough for one. Anybody else would have a hard time. If you're a fan of traffic, uh, then your view is blocked, unfortunately, by this bush. Here's Tamsay Ringler's Port de Moor. Okay, Tamsay, it's tight, but I'm going to try it. Kind of reminds me of a less scary version of the Blair Witch Project or something. This is Becky Gooten's survival. It's just reminding me I gotta do my laundry. Ow, it's, it's kind of hot. Well, I tried really hard to interact with this sculpture, uh, but I wasn't able to when I got to these. I wanted to interact with this one too. Uh, no name or title. I want to call it MacArthur Park, for those of you who get that reference, uh, but they don't want me to interact really. Luis Toruella. Observatorio de la Imaginación. Ow, ow, that's really hot. That's really hot. That's hot. Hey, wow. You know, I reviewed this one in Sculpture Park Reviews Episode 2, but I didn't actually sit down on it. So let's see what happens. Ow, no, never mind. Okay, so, what did we learn? First, if you're a sculptor, do not make your sculptures out of iron if they're uh, going to be sitting out in the hot sun and you expect someone to sit down on it. Second, I think most sculptors uh, that create something interactive are really just inviting you to look more closely at their own sculpture. So is that egotistical, or is that just being considerate? Leave your comments below. Another way to think of it is, all sculptures are interactive, really. I mean, all sculptures are in three dimensions, which means you can walk around them, you can get up close to them, you can look at them from any distance, and get different views every time you take a step. That's 
the definition of interactive. And that's something you certainly can't do in a museum with a painting or some other kind of art. So consider this. Next time you're walking through a sculpture park, you are interacting with it. Take the time to notice that and look at them from different angles. That's why there are sculptures. If there's a gate, go through it. If there's a chair, sit down. Unless it's made out of hot steel and it's been sitting in the sun and then don't, just don't. Can't walk an iPod at the same time. <laughs>